Church. Welcome Abundant Life International family to the worship service this morning on the 31st of May 2020 and today's theme is welfare as we already heard and um, the key verse is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Today is the Lord's Day, it is Yah's Day, and we will celebrate His victory at Calvary. Right. Hallelujah. The grave is empty. Hallelujah. And He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father, given Him a name which is above every other name, and we thank God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we continue to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And we pray that every born-again believer would be filled with the Holy Spirit Amen. and not only filled as an event, but filled in the process of a day-to-day -day journey with Jesus, Amen. walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And God wants to fill you, empower you, envision you so that you can walk this walk in this life in victory and bringing glory, honor and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week we had a wonderful time and we spoke on the Holy Spirit and we we looked at Acts chapter 2 verse 4 where it spoke about being filled with the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and all the 120 that were waiting on him. It was not in the upper room but it was really speaking in the temple because it was nine in the morning and they were uh, sitting in most probably in the Gentile court and uh, we know that when they were filled with the Spirit Peter stood up along with the other eleven and he preached his first sermon, his first message and that was the same denying trembling Peter was now bold with the Holy Ghost fire and power and he spoke and uh, it was so wonderful amen but when they spoke in tongues it was the whole gathering around of 3,000 that had come to celebrate the feast of Pentecost on um, that day that morning and so it couldn't have been in the upper room it was definitely in the temple as we continue to move on this journey and the Lord Jesus is coming back very soon the Holy Spirit our Parakletos is going on revealing things into the finer details of his word so that we would be further enlightened and we would get a clearer picture and one day we are going to see him face to face Amen. praise the Lord I am excited are you not Amen so let's look at today's topic. Today is welfare and um, we, we look at the word welfare, the meaning of welfare. And um, the welfare means the health, happiness and fortunes of a person or group. Amen. Secondly, it is a statutory procedure or social effort designed to promote the basic physical and material well-being of people in need. Hallelujah. It's seeing to the basic needs and well-being of people around Amen. us. Now, Abundant Life International has assemblies, ministries, and associates. And we want to thank God for the spiritual action in Abundant Life Assemblies. 
the W9. We look at all these topics that were touched upon this year. Oh, this is Word. First one was Word. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Amen. We need the Word of God first in our lives. And when we have the Word of God, we receive number two, wisdom. Wisdom from above, wisdom from His Word, wisdom from the living Word of God. Amen. And when we receive wisdom, that practical knowledge of God, thirdly, we begin to worship Him. We know who we worship. We know we, how to worship in spirit and in truth. We worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahushua, and, and even by the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, who is God Himself. Amen. And we can worship the Triune Godhead. And then when we worship, we can enter into warfare against the enemy and against the flesh life and against the spirit of this world, which is contrary to the word of God. And then when we do warfare, we are set free to walk uh, in freedom breaking all bindings around our lives and as we walk with a living testimony of Jesus in victory by the blood of the Lamb we are overcomers and by the word of our testimony our character praise the Lord we bring glory to God amen and then we can work freely the works of God and we do good works and we still treasure in heaven amen so that was the sixth one a work and we move on to the seventh one is witness amen so when we are witnesses uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ praise the Lord people will see the works that we do and they will glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. We are witnesses to Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit inside of us enables us to be true witnesses of Jesus. Amen. Sent by the Heavenly Father to planet Earth. Amen. And uh, then we move on to the eighth one, and that's the topic for today, welfare. Come on, say, welfare. welfare. Hallelujah. It's so good. Amen. When we have welfare, all will be well. Amen. And we can fare well. Amen. And then we move on to the ninth one, is wealth. And we will uh, do that uh, next week. Praise the Lord. So that's the W9. But this 8 1 welfare leads us into a social action. Uh, we must do something. And that's where we have abundant life ministries with H9. Amen. So the first one is home. We need to give priority to our home. Amen. Our very own family to set it in order to look after our family, to take care and share with our family. Amen. Number two is health. Amen. Health is true wealth and we need to have health, not only bodily health, physical health, but we need mental health. Amen. Emotional health. We need spiritual health. So good health in spirit, soul and body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We move on thirdly to the holistic education. And this education is uh, not just academics, but we need uh, an education for our spirit, soul, and body and be wholesome in our growth. Amen. And education is so important for the poor for the needy ones because those little ones who are learning in abundant life academy in our schools they get a head start and those very little ones um, would have become adult illiterates 
but today they have a head start and they go to school and they are educated praise the Lord for that and then we move on to uh, human resources number four and uh, we need to tap everyone's potential know that each one is unique and everyone enriches the body of Christ and everyone is made available to enrich this world at large amen society at large and then we go to the fifth one it's humane employment having compassion and uh, making way for people and connecting people with uh, that they may have jobs helping them to start little businesses but they everyone must be employed yeah. Amen. And it may be from a, a maid servant right up to a manager and the management level. Praise the Lord. But we want to see that everyone is able to catch a fish. Amen. We move on to the sixth one, and that is help. We need to help people. Amen. Stand on their feet. We may give them a fish like the old saying but we also would equip them to be educated and stand on their feet and what in whatever little way we can chip in and then they can catch fish themselves and give others to eat amen so a helping hand really for people as and when we can do that and then the seventh one is high-tech media. Now this high-tech media is not our master, it is our servant. And so a high-tech must be a servant to high-touch so that we can enhance the high-touch relationships that we enjoy vertically with the Lord Jesus Christ and horizontally with one another within the body of Christ and reach out to the world as a witness. But high-tech media is being used right now in the Zoom cloud service and we are sure that we are uh, enjoying it every bit. Amen, Amen, church. Praise the Lord. And then we go to the eighth one. It's house. That is housing. And we're, as and when over the years we have helped people plaster their home, paint their home, repair their roofs uh, and it's so wonderful. Just uh, Bella just reminds me of what we did last week. We had the cyclonic storm hitting Odisha and West Bengal. Uh, thank God in Odisha it wasn't very severe against our people there but uh, in West Bengal it did come against uh, the houses of some of our believers and so we reached out to help them with repairing their roofs with with asbestos sheets and uh, also giving them meals and rations so praise be to God and we want to thank God for all our pastors of Abundant Life Assemblies giving from time to time rations within Mumbai and other parts of India. So glory be to God. We need to stand in the gap, not only in prayer, but coming forward in social action for the welfare and well-being of the needy ones around us. Hallelujah. So selfishness turns into selflessness. Amen. That's what Jesus did in our lives inside out amen and then uh, we move on to the ninth one is called habitat and habitat is having a wonderful environment and we believe the environment should be charged with the anointing of god with a, a, a clean green environment amen so we always encourage people and help other organizations into uh, tree plantations and whatever amen but also uh, to have the environment clean so we challenge people in the slums to um, have good sanitation 
and educate them into this clean environment. Okay, now we move into some of the scriptures. We'll begin with Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 to 34. Amen. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles see, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Amen. But seek first the kingdom first. of God Amen. and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry, about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is its own trouble amen and amen. amen this is jesus talking and it is part of this wonderful sermon on the mount in matthew's gospel chapters 5 6 and 7 and the sermon on the mount uh, the the message of Jesus is all mentioned in red in some of the Bibles and it just goes on to say that Jesus himself has uttered these words and these are his teachings where he has made it very plain simple and very clear and yet profound mm -hmm. that it is it is so important for us never never ever to worry tell the members of your home and your family right now turn to them look at them and say please please i beseech you do not worry there are many people even in the house of god who are worrying so much especially now during this period of the covid 19 do not worry this worry will lead to hypertension and this hypertension will lead to sicknesses and diseases. It comes against, it fights against the immunity, the defense mechanism in our very bodies, in our very lives. So do not fret, do not fear, do not worry people of God. We need to trust in God. When you realize you are worrying, you need to pray in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, if you cannot pray in tongues, ask for the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to give you the gift of tongues so that you can use it as a prayer language. But as you pray, you build up your most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. And when you pray, all the all the worry will vanish away when you worry you need to cast your burdens as the Lord Jesus himself has invited us come to me all those who are heavy laden and burdened come to me and receive your rest hallelujah amen my yoke is easy and my burden is light 
people of God do not carry these heavy burdens. The Lord Jesus came precisely for this reason into this world to carry your burdens, to carry your loads and take it to the cross. Hallelujah. In Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of the Shabbat. Amen. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And He will give you true shalom in your heart and in your mind. So please, please do not worry. Hallelujah. Continue in the walk with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Do not worry about these daily basic needs because our heavenly father will provide us amen. amen through the cross of jesus christ through the cross exchange you will have every need met as you trust in him you will rest in him hallelujah hallelujah it says here seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things pertaining to life and godliness will be added unto you. What is our need in this life? I just listed about some need, basic needs of a human being. The very first need in our life is air. Air. And air is given to us freely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, we need water. Praise God that we have water to drink and we are not in the desert. We may have difficulty with the municipal water at times, but thank God. We, but till today, God has provided us with water. Even during this hot season of the month of May, we have water. We have water to drink, water to wash with. Amen. Water to bathe with. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for all these things. He does take care of all these needs. Not only air and water. We need food. And I think during this time, no one has ever starved. Even during this time of seeming famine. Because people have come forward. The government, maybe NGOs, even people with generous hearts. Even the house of God has come forward and brought in the uh, grains and the rations that people need. Thank God for all these uh, things that are done for the welfare of people. Amen. Both saints and sinners. Amen. And so we not only need air, water, food, we need sleep. Amen. That's a gift from God. He gives His beloved sleep. Praise the Lord. Together with sleep is rest. And we, we, you, we can, uh, you can have sleep but yet no rest. You can have rest but no sleep. But we believe God that God will give it to you. When you read your word, amen, before you go to bed and you pray in tongues, you will automatically go into a sweet lullaby by the Lord Himself, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and you will get your rest. You will get your sleep. Amen. Don't try to shorten your sleep hours. Get adequate rest that will build your immunity during this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Minimum eight, eight hours. Hallelujah. And so, uh, be a good steward during this time and utilize your time wisely. If one third of the day is utilized for sleep and the other third is uh, should be for work, amen, whatever work and ministry or whatever you have to do and the other eight hours for other miscellaneous things, amen. So praise God for that. Read your Bible daily, amen. Pray daily, have fellowship regularly, amen, and just uh, read and feed on what you are getting in this daily devotions of, of walkwise and even the book of Revelation, the Bible study and the Sunday morning messages. Just enjoy it, chew it, digest it, meditate upon it, bring it forth, discuss it with the family and it will be very much flesh and blood in your life. It will be part of your 
growth. Amen. Hallelujah. We are the word bride. The word must become flesh in us. Amen. Because the same word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. But now he's living inside of us by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So we not only need sleep, we need clothing. Amen. And we need shelter above our heads. And we need maybe power, electricity. Amen. And then we need health. We need sanitation. We need education. We need a job. We need a business. Amen. These are some of the nine areas. And then you would say, I need Wi-Fi. Well, yes, but uh, utilize the wise look. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may want a gadget. You may want a car. Amen. And you say that's the basic need. Oh, hallelujah. You may need transport. Praise the Lord. All these are needs that come to us and that we receive by the grace of God and the, the power of purchase that God has given us and empowered us with. Amen. So, uh, Christian, do not be selfish even during these trying times. Amen. What does the word of God say? You try to save your life, you will end up losing it. But if you lose your life for his sake, amen, and for selflessness sake, for others, you will gain your life. Amen. amen. So be blessed during this time in your tithes, in your offerings, whatever you can do, beloved, do it, not grudgingly, do it generously, hilariously, cheerfully, and you will have the joy of the Lord. Whenever I give, I enjoy the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. Amen. amen. When we are happy, amen, we will be healthy. Amen. When we are holy, we will be healthy. Praise the Lord for that. This last week, the Lord led me to write three poems. And these poems uh, are dedicated to the world at large during this trying time. Yeah. And one was dedicated to the body of Christ. And the third one was dedicated to every born again saint of God. Amen. So press on in this wonderful race of grace. Hallelujah. Until you see his face. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. And here Jesus is reminding his people. He says, he says, the birds do not have to toil for their food, but I am feeding the sparrows of the air. And how much more value are you? Amen. Look at the look at the grass of the field. Look at the lily of the valley. How I clothe it. Amen. It doesn't toil to clothe itself, but I do it. Your God creates. Your God provides. And He will surely provide for you. Because you are made in the image and likeness of the living God Himself. Amen. Yahoshua. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And so... It's loud and clear that we have to seek first His kingdom, His righteousness, and all things pertaining to life and godliness. All our welfare would be added unto us. Food, clothing, shelter, jobs, lifetime partners, hallelujah, ministry, whatever it will be given unto you. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. Now, uh, Bella, we'll move on to the next passage in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And this is the lifestyle of the early church. Amen. A wonderful lifestyle that we can adopt and adapt to during this difficult time. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses. Okay. Verse 42. 42. 
and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as any one had need so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising god and having favor with all people and the lord added to the church daily those who were being saved Amen. hallelujah hallelujah this born again church was a consistent church it was a very steadfast church amen it says they continued steadfastly amen, amen. we need to continue in the spirit we need to continue with our journey with jesus never ever give up amen we need to hold the hand of jesus and keep walking and keeping pace with him hallelujah praise the lord so we are steadfast in the word of god the apostles doctrine in the apostles teachings amen and in fellowship even through zoom cloud through the telephone through video calls whatever we are still in fellowship one with another and in the breaking of bread break bread with your family if you're the only one well before the lord just thank the lord know that the holy spirit is with you and you can definitely break bread all alone amen because you have the body in the spirit amen, amen. hallelujah the body of christ praise the lord and so all kinds of prayers of intercession and uh, confessions and repentance and today we are going to do on repentance and and pray for our nation and pray for the nations of the world pray for israel at the end of the service because the whole world is doing it and millions of people are gathering together today for about 20 minutes to pray so Please stay on online till the very end, till uh, Pastor Rowett leads us in that time of prayer. And uh, it would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Amen. The UCPI, the, the MTN, all gathering together for prayer. And the whole network of prayer is going to be really powerful against COVID-19, uh, bringing salvation to souls, bringing mm -hmm. healing to the land, repentance, not being afraid of all these swarms of locusts and all that because that's only a trailer of what is to come in the seven year great tribulation but we will be caught up in the rapture before that amen and so we see uh, sorry amen. we see amen 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 is also truth amen when you say amen you can say truth hallelujah amen and so we see the real fear of god came upon every soul they were really holy and there were many wonders and signs wonderful hallelujah and these were done through the apostles amen as we are seeing some people being healed of the covid 19 thank god amen. thank you jesus and mason he'll also be totally healed in jesus name now all who believed were together amen they were together and had all things in common my 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 this is not communism amen but this is community living amen where there are people rich and poor but always they will see to it that the family of god is taken care of amen and that should be our attitude 
and our spirit because we are getting opportunity during the season to express that love to our brothers and sisters. Amen. So that those who are suffering, those who are in pain, we would empathize with them and stretch out with loving kindness, love in action. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, they had all things in common and they even sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. There was a good stewardship of resources. Amen. So continuing daily, not weekly, but daily with one accord. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. In the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Wonderful. So they were together in the celebrate community. Amen. In corporate gathering in the temple as well as in the cell churches, amen, in the home cells, in the care cells, and they were there having meals together, praying together, hallelujah, excuse me. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, amen. There was great joy because that joy would be their strength. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Amen. The other day we had Joy Bell's 21st birthday celebration. And she said, how am I going to celebrate it? Well, because it's a lockdown and it's my 21st birthday. She said, don't worry, God will make the way uh, and uh, make a way. And uh, we see that uh, the neighbors, some of them came with 21 big balloons and all colors and uh, wonderful. They brought in some food and we, we celebrated with, uh, with different kinds of dishes and, and it was so nice and uh, we had some fun time. They really cherished it. And guess what? We also had uh, uh, nine of their uh, young people on Zoom to see that Joy Bell cuts the cake and so it was a wonderful time. So all together we were 21 of us. Wow, isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. So she had a great birthday. It's so nice when we have a cell church in our home. That's the future church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And everyone can participate and grow and together corporately we can come together week after week and energize uh, one another in this whole vibrant worship as a lifestyle in the name of Yehoshua. Amen. So praise be to God. And guess what God did? Amen. And Rachna rode the scooter and she came all the way from Kar to Bandra. That was her first day out after two months, seven days. So thank you, Rachna. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we see that um, there was favor and the Lord himself added Amen. to the church daily those who were being saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. So daily we can have salvations. Amen. Let's move on to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 17. So what we just saw was the household of faith was taken care of. In Matthew 6, it is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all your personal needs would be met. And then we saw in Acts chapter 2, the whole household of faith, the community of the Holy Spirit has every need met. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's look at Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 17. Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Amen, amen. Good instructions, 
wholesome instructions in the Old Testament. Wow! But it was prophetic because we have to do the same things now. Do good. Learn to do good. Wow! Isn't that wonderful? We need to learn to do good. We are all learning. We have a big L plate. We are learning to do good, not evil against anybody. Amen. Amen. No matter who they may be, they may persecute us, they may be our enemies, whatever the situation, we may be so angry, unforgiving, bitter, but no, 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 we need to repent because all those things affect us first. Therefore, we need to get right with God and just bless the people. So we have to learn to do good. Amen. Even to our enemies. Bless them. We need to seek justice. Amen. Seek justice. Because that's the foundation of God's throne. He's a very just God. Amen. Amen. He's an impartial God. Amen. He rebukes the oppressor. We must rebuke the oppressor. Reprove. Correct. Hallelujah. Tell them what is right. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why even through the, uh, through the Opry Ab, we've been even arresting the pimps and all these people. Amen. Brothel owners. We prosecute them. And uh, God is good. God is good. That's the other part of welfare and rescue these minor girls and other women who are into forced prostitution. Praise the Lord. Liberty comes to them once again. We defend the fatherless, the orphans. Amen. Thank God for our Jubilee home and other uh, children homes in other parts of India. Praise the Lord for them. They are being looked after. Some of them have become uh, missionaries. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and one has even joined the defense force. Praise the Lord from our school. Amen. Uh, we plead for the widow. Amen. Make them understand that Christ can be their husband and Christ can take care of everyone. Hallelujah. Here, when we talk about widows, uh, you know, the aged ones, um, the, our elders, remember if they have children and grandchildren who can look after them, they must never be put into the home for the aged. Amen. We need to honor parents and receive the blessing that God intends to give us. Amen. Now we move on to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. Bella. If anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Amen. We do not want any lazy bone in the house of the Lord and so we expect everyone I also tell our pastors if you cannot look after your household then you shouldn't be in full time you take up a job and uh, and uh, serve your family and bless your family and take care of your family you cannot have starving children and be preaching in the house of God. No way. We are accountable to God. Amen. So if um, we um, take care of our household, praise the Lord. Amen. It's so wonderful. The Lord is glorified. Amen. But if we cannot look after our household and we only know how to reproduce uh, children I, I believe in the sight of the Lord we are considered as worse than unbelievers because even unbelievers look after their family amen praise the Lord so uh, let's move on to first Peter chapter 4 
verses 9 and 10. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. I believe every Christian home has to be hospitable. You may even be hospitable to strangers sometimes and they could have been you entertaining angels. Well, I know we have 101 reasons why we do not deal with strangers but I want to tell you to be discerning and also to be sensitive to people's needs. Amen. So be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Martha was being hospitable but she was grumbling and Jesus corrected her. Amen. When we are sitting at the feet of the Lord at the beginning of the day, we can handle the hospitality during the day without grumbling. Because we are energized by the word, we are anointed by the Spirit of God, and God is the one who gives us a pat on the back, amen, and says, hey, you're doing a good job, amen. Yeah. Us, Bella, I very often turn to her and say, thank you. Amen. I thank her for every meal besides thanking the Lord first. Amen. Hallelujah. Eat whatever is laid before you. Amen. Be content. Enjoy every situation. First Peter chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. And therefore we not only have to be hospitable without grumbling and we must minister, serve, one another minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God these are all grace gifts amen they are manifold they are numerous in number hallelujah they are numerous rather hallelujah so we move on to Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10 and let us not grow weary while doing good as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. Do not be weary, saints of God, in doing good. Do not faint in doing good. God will give you the grace and the overcoming power. Hallelujah. Do not be weary while doing good especially to the household of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can be true overcomers. We must overcome evil with good. Romans, finally, Romans chapter 12 and verse 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good Amen. come on come on could we say it together come on one two three do not, do not be, be overcome, overcome by evil but, but overcome, overcome evil, evil with, with good. good hallelujah hallelujah i will close with one quote from john wesley the wonderful preacher and the man of god in the years gone by he says, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we truly want to thank you for your word. We pray that you would minister your word into our lives and cause the word to become flesh so that we would not only see the good and welfare of God 
coming into our lives, but we would take care of our very own families and the family of God and reach out to the needy souls around us with the welfare that you enable us to do. Thank you, Lord. Thus far, you have helped us, Holy Spirit, and we will continue helping others till you come again. In Jesus' name.